Construction is currently underway for a new urea unit at the Great Plains Sinfields plant. Utilizing a STAMI carbon urea process, the unit will be capable of producing 1,100 short tons of granulated urea and approximately 180,000 gallons of diesel exhaust fluid per day. The process requires carbon dioxide and anhydrous ammonia produced from the facility's existing ammonia unit. Urea is a dry, solid granule that contains 46% nitrogen and it's widely used in the agricultural industry as fertilizer. Diesel exhaust fluid, which is more commonly known as DEF or AdBlue, is a urea liquor that is used in modern diesel engines for emissions as required by law. While most of the construction activities will be taking place in the area seen here, there will also be construction in the ammonia storage and boiler house areas of the facility. High pressure ammonia pumps will be installed near the existing ammonia storage tanks to transfer anhydrous ammonia to the new urea unit. Up at the boiler house, the existing Riley boilers would not be able to produce enough steam to meet the demands of the facility and the new urea unit. So a new package style boiler will be installed to increase steam capacity for the entire facility by 200,000 pounds per hour. Over by the facility's existing ammonia unit is a CO2 liquefaction and compressor building and two CO2 storage tanks. Each of the tanks can hold up to 500 tons of CO2. Inside the building, we have the CO2 liquefaction, drying, and purification skid, which will refine CO2 from the existing ammonia unit to food grade quality CO2 at a rate of 200 short tons per day. Also located in the building is a custom compressor from Mitsubishi in Japan that will compress the CO2 and transfer it to the urea unit. At the main urea unit, we have the melt and granulation buildings and tanks used for various purposes throughout the process. A new chemical that is being imported to the site is UF85, which is a urea formaldehyde concentrate and we'll discuss its purpose later. Inside the melt building, the STAMI carbon high pressure SAFREX equipment lies at the heart of the urea synthesis process. These pieces of equipment are the HP stripper, scrubber, and pool reactor, which convert the CO2 and anhydrous ammonia into liquid urea. Schiller Blackman, which is located in Austria, is one of the only fabricators in the world that can make these proprietary vessels. Before the liquid urea is turned into its granular form in the granulator, the UF85 that was mentioned earlier is added to the liquid stream. This serves in aiding the granulation process and is an anti-caking agent so the granules don't stick together. The granulator consists of two sections, one for granulating and the other for initial cooling. In the first section, undersized granules are recycled where they are sprayed with the urea UF85 mixture to build up the particle size. In both sections, air is introduced from the underside to fluidize and cool down the granules. The air that is discharged from the granulator will contain urea dust particles that need to be scrubbed out before being returned to the atmosphere. This will be done by utilizing a series of two scrubbers, known as the quench and MMV scrubbers, which will remove the urea dust particles. The quench and MMV scrubbers are a proprietary design by EnviroCare out of California. After the granulator, the granules go through several material handling processes such as screening, cooling, and crushing. The on-sized product is then transferred to the storage barn in the storage and loadout area. Located next to the storage barn is a million gallon storage tank for the DEF. On the other side of the storage barn is the loadout facility and it has three bays. Granular urea will be loaded in bays 1 and 2 and the DEF will be loaded in bay 3. Bays 2 and 3 have the capability to load by either truck or rail. Inside the storage barn there is quite a unique setup for shaping and reclaiming from the 53,000 ton pile. The urea drops onto the pile off of a conveyor and then a portal reclaimer is used to maintain the pile profile and also serves to reclaim the material from the pile and onto a conveyor on the northeast side. The conveyor then sends the urea over to the loadout bays. Everything is expected to be mechanically complete November 2016 in order to meet the spring urea market.